Hey guys, what's up? Hope everyone's having a great day and I hope you're well out there in the world. Okay, today on Court Watching, we have a couple who is fighting over custody, fighting over money. They have temporary restraining orders when it comes to the money. Anyway, let's just take a look, shall we? Court will note the appearance of Mr. Todd on behalf of the plaintiff, Mr. Sullivan on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the uh, two motions of the plaintiff, a motion for temporary parenting time, custody, exclusive use, and possession, and a motion for a mutual uh, temporary restraining order concerning assets. Mr. Todd. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I'll, I'll start with the uh, mutual restraining order. Um, I've read Mr. Sullivan's response, um, and the reason we requested the mutual restraining order in part um, is that the opposing party was spending 250 to 300 dollars at party stores which became approximately one thousand dollars a month party um, stores. we requested this stop and it didn't at that point the parties called it individuals of um, in me he moved twelve thousand dollars from the joint account into his bank account um, and then she moved twelve thousand dollars into her individual account as well uh, prior to speaking with an attorney she then moved $130,000 into her saving account. She is totally fine putting back $118,000 into the joint account, which is the uh, uh, just less than $12,000. So she's totally fine moving that $118,000 into the joint account as long as the ex parte, as long as the mutual restraining order is in place. Currently, there is $52,000 in the joint account. Additionally, in relation to their response, she's transferring money into the joint account. She transferring half of the amount that it would be for the bills into the joint account. So we do believe that it's it's appropriate that the mutual restraining order exists. And if that happens, my client is certainly happy to, again, return that $118,000 back to the joint account. And do you want me to go into the other motion, too, as well? well let's, no, let's have Mr. Sullivan respond. Mr. Sullivan, you know, you've heard Mr. Todd. Uh, that resolved issues on the, uh, uh, I guess, preliminary injunction. And, uh, a couple of points. First of all, Mr. Dad begins with the uh, assertion that my client was spending uh, X amount of money at uh, a liquor store, and that was the basis for filing the petition for ex parte order. Oh, As he was saying that, party I store. reviewed the ex parte motion, and there's nothing in the motion that suggests that at all. So that seems to, to be a curious statement today when it wasn't pled initially. And okay. Well, let's get past that because I didn't grant the ex parte anyway, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. Well, fair enough, but I don't see that ever has been presented as a basis, and it's hard to respond to that when it just comes up this morning. Okay. Secondly, we don't have an objection to the issuance of a mutual restraining order. What we would like to see is an accounting by each side that can be done in connection with the filing of the domestic uh, financial information form that indicates who withdraw what amount of money at what time. So. That's what we would ask for. I don't think we're apart on this issue. Okay. And no objection, Your Honor. Okay. Court will uh, grant a uh, preliminary injunction at this time, uh, enjoin the parties from disposing of secreting, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, in any way hindering their various assets. Uh, it would, uh, court would allow, as Mr. Todd has uh, suggested, that uh, the uh, plaintiff would transfer $118,000 back into the joint account and then uh, would would you be able, Mr. Todd, your client, be able to account for those withdrawals, et cetera, within 30 days, let's say? Um, your, your Honor, I guess if we could have 45 days just to be on the safe side. Okay. Mr. Sullivan, would your client be able to comply within 45 days? Yes. And okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I did have one thing to add. And I've communicated with Mr. Todd about this issue, but my client is in the process of ending a lease on a truck. He's going to need to have another truck. My plan is to work with Mr. Todd on that and perhaps if necessary enter a consent uh, order to allow for the um, him to get a different truck and, and if that necessitates some uh, jacking of money then we'll, we'll make that work Your Honor. do you agree why, Mr. Don't, Todd? why don't we just do that uh, mr Sullivan? if in the event your client needs to take money out of the joint account to acquire you know as far as the money down on a vehicle that miss logan would be entitled to receive an equal amount as sure. a withdrawal as well yeah no objection okay Go ahead, Mr. Todd. You can prepare that and you can proceed with your other motion. God, Thank so you, Honor. much money. Uh, in terms of the, uh, probably makes sense to start with the house. Miss um, Logan is currently pregnant. She's in a high risk pregnancy because she had a prior cesarean, cesarean section and is a diabetic. 
so the stress changes in her cortisol levels, which can cause changes in her sugar levels, and this can actually have a, a significantly negative impact on the fetus in terms of issues with the, the heart. Um, we've attached some verification as an offer of proof uh, to our motion. Um, and so the, the physician actually recommended uh, that Mr. Logan move out of the house. Um, additionally, Ms. Logan cannot live with her parents. They have four dogs and she has three dogs, so they have two dogs. And unfortunately, that's simply not feasible. However, Mr. Logan has another house in town that he owns. Um, and additionally, his parents also live in town, so he could live with them as well. So we are respectfully requesting exclusive use and possession of the home be granted to Miss Logan. Um, and I'm happy to continue forward if you want with my custody portion. Yep, go ahead. Thank you. In terms of custody, Miss Logan has always done the, uh, she's been the primary caregiver. She has done all the drop-offs for the minor children's school or daycare and has absolutely been the primary caregiver. Uh, Mr. Logan has a substantial history of alcohol abuse. Upon returning home from work at seven or eight, he will usually start drinking. That unfortunately has continued even since he has been served with this motion. Even within the past few months, uh, he went to a high school reunion and passed out in his car. His parents needed to pick him up. This is just a, an indication of how the alcoholism has continued. Additionally, he does have a, an a OWI in his history. Mr. Logan's work schedule in essence prevents him from being able to parent a, a two-year-old child just turned three. Um, and anything more than the Calhoun County Standard Parenting Time, we don't believe would be anything he could actually even uh, use. He was fired in April, and since that point, he has not been picking up the child. Um, just actually after being served this motion, he has started picking up the child once in a while. But again, Miss Logan has always been uh, the person who has picked up the child, with the exception of a few, well, always been the one who dropped off the child and has picked up the child with the exception of a few weeks. It is accurate that Mr. Logan plays with the child, but unfortunately that's all he does. He does not bathe the child, he does not provide the child food, he doesn't do anything like that. He does not take the child to appointments or schedule appointments or anything of that nature. Additionally, in relation to the response, the alleged reason for the breakdown is not just an attraction issue, that is one reason, um, but the reason for the breakdown is unfortunately Mr. Logan's alcohol addiction, um, and, and additionally he has been cheating on her and unfaithful. And that's the reason for the breakdown. Additionally, uh, okay. unfortunately, relatively recently, Mr. Logan's parents were watching the child. Um, and then upon drop off to Miss Logan's house, uh, they berated Miss Logan about the divorce in front of the child. So we are respectfully requesting uh, that the court remind everybody to not have any discussion in front of the child. So we are respectfully requesting that uh, Ms. Logan, or Mr. Logan have the Calhoun County Standard Parenting Time provided for children from three years old until entry of kindergarten. We did change this from our original request because the child did turn three. Um, so we are respectfully requesting in court order that, um, and we would request that midweek visit just be once a week on Wednesday. Um, lastly, we did include in our motion that uh, Mr. Logan's brother not have contact with the minor child because he does have a, uh, he is on the separate registry for CFC. Oh my God. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sullivan? Oh my God. Uh, a lot to respond to, Judge. I want to start out with the presumption under law, and the presumption is that joint custody is presumed to be in the best interest of the minor child. My client's position is that the parties have equally provided joint care of the minor child. My client's position is backed up by uh, testimony that if, should we have a hearing would offer the paternal grandparents say that, that the care was equal between the two of them. And I've, as I indicated in my pleadings, Judge, my client did work at Semco until just recently. When working at Semco, he always provided to pick up the care after school or after daycare and the care in the evening, early evening part particularly and then they joint cared in the um, in the evening. So the care was equal, if not more in favor of my client. So for the plaintiff to assert otherwise and simply focus on who took the child to daycare at the beginning, ignoring all the afternoon and early evening time and then the joint care in the evening uh, is dis disingenuous and is mischaracterization of the facts. Again, joint custody is presumed. They are still together. They still have equally co-parented. And for that reason, that shouldn't change 
simply because Miss Logan wants a divorce. It is in the best interest of the child to continue to, continue to be in equal care of both parents. Now I want to talk about this claim of the drinking. Yes. There were two assertions in the motion filed by plaintiff. One was that my client had an uh, OWI of sorts um, in his history. That's true. But as, as I've indicated in our response, Judge, that was 14 years ago, 12 years before Wyatt was born. To suggest that that has any relevance to today's action is just illogical. Uh, secondly, today, Mr. Todd asserted that he consumed too much at a reunion. That's not accurate. It, there was a union meeting as pled in their motion. He did consume too much alcohol in April of 24. He did the right thing and didn't drive home. To suggest that one occasion of consuming too much alcohol is a reason to, to not award joint legal custody to two parents who have equally co-parented is, again, illogical. The plaintiff makes a number of allegations, none of which is supported by other than what the plaintiff alleges. We, on the other hand, allege the opposite, and they've lived together since the child was born, and they've equally co-parented. We're asking that you issue a joint physical custody order. I wanted to mention about the ailment that is alleged by plaintiff. We have text messages wherein plaintiff texted to paternal grandmother that, you know, this is a, a bit of an oddity, but plaintiff will not communicate with my client about the pregnancy and the, in the, in the prenatal care. She will, however, communicate with paternal grandmother. And she did just recently communicate that all things are going well in the pregnancy. So mm -hmm. that's not consistent with the assertion that there's a stress level that's impactful at the present, because it's not, as affirmed by Ms. Logan. So we're asking that my client retain the home, that my client have joint physical custody of the minor child. Okay, thank you. Mr. Todd, any response? Uh, just very briefly, all right. Before he continues, I just wanna say, we never found out what she does. We don't know her work schedule at all. and. Just because she said um, everything's going fine in a text message doesn't always necessarily mean that everything's fine. You just sometimes you just don't want to tell certain people things that are going on. I'm just going to put that out there. But still, anyway, we'd need more context and and how everything actually blew up in their marriage. My apologies, that was a union issue. Um, however, he, in essence, told my client and the child he was going to return home that night, um, and he failed to do so, drinking excessively um, to the extent that he passed out in his vehicle. Uh, again, just indicating how significant the alcoholism problem is. Additionally, he will continue to drink after he returns home, which is not until 7 or 8 o'clock at night. So we believe it's absolutely relevant. Um, in terms of my client's pregnancy, the closer this uh, comes to fruition, um, the more important it is to remain her A1C levels to remain intact. Um, and her indication to uh, the opposing party's mother that pregnancy is going okay, uh, that's because she's trying to manage these levels as much as possible. But again, we have a physician note requesting, in essence, that she be given exclusive use of possession of home. Yeah, well, Mr. Todd, as you might know, court doesn't consider yep. uh, the I, physician's uh, recommendations as to exclusive use of the home so i, I yep I, I i understand your honor okay well what the court's going to do is the parties still are uh, together in the home so the court is going to uh, at this point the court is going to grant to the parties the joint physical and joint legal custody of the minor child the court will at the time that the parties do separate the court will uh, put in place a parenting time of a 223 schedule for the parties court will order support consistent with the uh, that schedule when the parties have separated and in this matter the court will at this point is based upon what is stated the court doesn't believe it's appropriate that the parties continue to remain together in this matter the court will grant uh, to the uh, plaintiff the exclusive use of the home and order that the uh, that the defendant would vacate in 45 days from today's date. Court would order that uh, when, again, the, when the uh, parties have the child in their particular care, that they would not consume any alcohol. So 
sir, at this point, they, they, there's just been allegations, and that's all they are at this point. But I will let you know that, uh, again, should it come up that there is uh, drinking when, uh, again, you have the child in your care, that the court could utilize that as a basis to, in fact, make a change in the uh, in the uh, custody and parenting time. So. Mr. Todd, I'll have you prepare that order, submit under seven-day notice of entry. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I apologize, Your Honor. Just one question. Um, uh, Mr. Logan's brother is... Oh, yes, I did. I wanted to address that. I didn't. Okay. I yes, think that the, uh, bro his brother, uh, Justin, Mark Logan, would not have any contact with the child. So, sir, I understand that you may have some issues, but if you're at your house or at your parents' house and the brother comes along, you have to leave because I don't want him having any contact with the child. Perfect. Okay, thank you. You can take care. Take care. Yeah, have a Wow. This poor woman, like the poor woman, pregnant, she, the husband's allegedly cheating, got a brother-in-law who really shouldn't be around children, still living with the guy. Like, that's what I don't understand. All this is going on and they're still living together. He's got another house. He's not working. He just got fired. Yet the hundreds of thousands of dollars are just like flying through bank accounts. What do you do for work? Are you hiring? What is going on? Anyway, what do you guys think? Ooh, this poor, anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Take care.